Hello, I'm Mark Tucker. Hey, I'm Alan Furstenberg. We are Two Voice Devs. Hey, Two Voice Devs. Good to see you again, Mark. Thank you very much. It's good to see you. Thank you. Uh, I'm tired. I don't know about you. I'm tired. Yeah, it's 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 getting later. Um, it gets but... it gets it gets later earlier and earlier these days. It... <laughs> Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> So um, last we talked, we were going through the um, policy testing guidelines for Alexa, and we got halfway through our list um, of, of things that if you do these things, then it's likely that your skill will either fail certification or be, re you know, be rejected if it's already out there. Sometimes things slip through the cracks. Sometimes new guidelines um, happen and... Uh, they're retroactive. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, it's important to review these um, on occasion and especially before you start a project. So you know if your great, fantastic idea for a voice experience is gonna even be allowed to be made into an Alexa skill. And it's also important to remember these are guidelines and yes. we do not enforce them. The, we do review, not. Te the review team uh, does. So, you know, if you, you know, don't take everything that we're saying as um, as firm guidance, but take it more. At, you know, if you've got a question, the review team is the ones to reach out to because they're the the final arbiters of this. And if you do something and the review team rejects it, you need to work with the review team to resolve your issues, not us. So yes, and and the review team has gotten better over time at identifying reasons why. Um, the the skill is so it used to not be as clear. It's getting to be more clear. Um, and uh, something we didn't mention last time, but when you're going into certification, um, sometimes we've really lucked out and like we've had a we've had it just perfectly overnight, and it was been a one you know approved the first time and ready to go overnight within a you know matter of hours. Um, but make sure you give yourself time because I've had other times where it's been four or five times. And then sometimes, um, especially you know, as an agency, sometimes we hit this, we hit new situations or we're using new features. And sometimes there must, there's like conversations amongst themselves on the Amazon side of things and, and that could delay things. Uh, so there's plenty of reasons why it could be delayed. Let's just make sure that the reasons on this list are not the reasons yep. why. So back to the list. We had, uh, we've gotten halfway through the list. We were just about to talk about why things could be rejected due to religion, ethnicity, and culture. Yes. Which is, so, this is a, this is a, a murky one. I think some of them seem really obvious, but complicated. So, yes. So there's definitely a sensitivity to this subject. And, you know, there's lots of different religions in the world. We have people that, that practice religions, people that don't. Um, and, but we need to keep in, uh, in, in mind some of those sensitivities. Now, um, this mostly goes around um, targeting like hate speech or targeting specific groups or, you know, hate organizations. Um, so you know we can't promote you know that we're staying clear of of that um the whole thing so yeah, it's not so, right yeah, so for example it says you cannot promote groups or organizations um such as the Ku Klux Klan and yes. you cannot contain or reference Nazi symbols or other symbols of hate you can't promote hate speech um it includes things like that you know i i kind of look at this and i say since everything that comes out of uh, an Alexa, you know, that comes from Alexa is kind of branded with, with Amazon automatically. You know, when we yeah. look at users, users don't always know that they're talking to a third party skill. Right. Amazon kind of takes the attitude of, we don't want to touch some of this. We don't want this anywhere near us. Yeah, but there's plenty of things that are in, that that are inclusive in this. There's there's you know uh, quotes or text from from different religious uh, works. 
um, you know, prayers and meditations. There's, there's just do a search in the Alexa skills store and you'll see there's probably, uh, you know, things that uh, pertain to a specific religions, if that's something that you're wanting to do. And you'll get a good feel for those things that are allowed and then refer to this section to make sure that, you know, the things that you're thinking about um, haven't been specifically disallowed or, you know, kind of the spirit of the, of the um, guidelines, right. you know, that fo- you might want to make sure that you follow the spirit and not just exactly the words. Like, I, oh, I, I can... only said this organization, not this other organization. Right. Well, okay, yeah. No, you're not the clan, but you're awfully similar. The way I kind of think of this is, you know, there's been a lot of criticism recently that um, websites or hosting providers have been stifling free speech. And I think what Amazon is concerned about in this case is they don't want to make it sound like they are saying these things. So that's where they're coming from on this. And I can I can certainly see that perspective. Yeah, I, I I agree, and I think you know we need to be respectful of others um, and their beliefs, and be kind, um, uh, even if we don't agree it, um, with them. But but and and some things just shouldn't be have a skill made about them. Some so. some things literally just shouldn't be said. I would agree with that. Yeah. Um, the next one though is a really interesting one, and it's a really yes. short paragraph about emergency services and telecommunications. And it literally all that it says is that you you can't allow users to contact emergency responders. I you can't have a nine one one system through Alexa. Yeah, and in the early days, I I was working with somebody, and and they were wanting they were wanting to invest um, in in us, and the product that they wanted was to be able to they're like these Alexas are going to be great. They're going to be in dorm rooms, and we want to be able to call campus police um from those and and i think to avoid liability amazon has specifically said that's not something that you can do you can um you can set up your device itself to if you say help that it can contact somebody give them a notification um but it's not going to call 911 for you yep Um, and I think part of the big reason for that is that 911 services themselves are heavily regulated. Yeah. And they need to behave in very specific ways. And Amazon doesn't want to, you know, be able to commit to the say that they're going to follow those regulations and follow those um restrictions. Yeah. You know, so so they don't they don't want again it boils down to they don't want people thinking they can just say call 911 and it will behave just like a 911 operator cuz yeah. it won't it won't the next one is incredibly broad it's kind of but, a grab bag about yeah. content stuff um uh, and it it basically you know some of it is i think it's covered elsewhere but it it basically kind of boils down to don't make content that's going to make us look bad. Is, yeah. is is really kind of what it is in a lot of ways. And there's there's more to it. But again, yeah. this comes to, well, you know, I should have my free speech to be able to say and publish whatever I want. And Amazon is saying, well, we have our free speech to say no. Yeah. And so, you know, things like um, uh, recreational drugs, um, alcohol, tobacco, uh, it also talks about, um, you know, profanity, false or misleading content. Um, so, like, you know, saying something's true when it's and it's it's not. Uh, but it also talks about like uh, you can't uh, talk about how to create a bomb or yeah. how to join a terrorist organization or lots of other things. Lots of other, you know. But it also includes things like no false or misleading content. That's yeah. that, that's broad, admittedly, but. You know, there's there's reasons for that. You know, also, and this was this was an interesting one that I uh, that I thought was interesting to include in here and not in the how do I make money category. Um, you you can't basically you can't create a gambling skill that offers real money. Yeah, 
which I thought was kind of interesting. But again, it makes sense because in every state that is heavily regulated and Amazon doesn't want to get in the middle of dealing with those regulations. Well, and th and this is kind of interesting because I, I've also seen other skills where like sometimes you have like a mini game where you, um, you know, like spin a wheel or you can or you or like a little a little mini game inside of a a game, a bigger game or a bigger skill that would be gambling oriented, even if it wasn't using money. That's also kind of yeah. frowned upon um, mm. to do that. You you'd have to kind of think of some ways to have it not be poker or have it not be, you know, something that's the specific like that. Um, but this category, if I think if there is some sort of a, you know, uh, addiction forming or 12 step program um, to help somebody to stop an addiction to something, then there's a lot of things listed in this category that would be those types of things. That's yeah, that's a good way to put it. I like that. <laughs> So that's that's the content section. So that's the now, con and then and then there's also the general section. <laughs> yes, um, and some of these are just kind of things like you you know these are some in some cases that like tasks that you need to do. You need to make sure that you have a uh, invocation name and a description and a title, and they follow the guidelines for those. And 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 um, most importantly, that it is in the language of the skill itself. Yes. So you you can't have a a description in French for an English skill, right? Uh, one of these things is to like talking about profanity aimed at children. Um, so it's not saying that profanity is not allowed, but the games and stuff that I make have been family friendly games, and so I want to make sure that they're family that they are friendly for the whole family. So in some cases, I've been able to give responses like even snatch snatch words. You can say a word, and that that's a word that gets added. Well, um, I added a profanity filter to it and automatically it's set to family friendly mode. And so you can't say a swear word, or if you do, then it will tell you, sorry, this the filter is not allowing you to do that. So there's things that you can do to screen input and also filter output mm -hmm. um, so that it can be family friendly. Um, and that's actually related to another point that's in here. And that's that unmoderated user generated content isn't allowed. So most skills, the vast majority of skills, you're preparing the content. And in fact, that's one of the things we yeah. almost always talk about are you preparing the content. But there are environments where it could be that the user contributes something that now gets saved and gets repeated back. And that's allowed, but it needs to be moderated. And yeah. I got to tell you, uh, my first action um, did oh, yeah. exactly that. It collected user content and it repeated it back. And pretty quickly, Google flagged it and said, hey, you need to moderate this. And I went and listened to why. And yeah, I needed to moderate this. And, and it, it, that's, it got pretty bad. That is the sad state of the internet today. Um but it, but it's important if you're trying to create something that is meant for public consumption, you need to ensure standards of quality. Yeah. So if you wanted to have a skill that would uh, speak out what was on Twitter or or play videos from YouTube, not only do you have to be like in the, in the case of YouTube, not only do you have to to uh, be cognizant of the copyright, you know, status of the content that you're presenting, but you can't also just present content. Like if you were able to you do a search random... and only get, oh, and, and get like, you know, creative commons or open license stuff, you can't just, you know, put, put that out there on screen. Now a curated list of content that is moderated before it goes into the curation list, you can do that, but you can't, um, you can't have it be un unmoderated. I've got to say, though, this, this section also contains something that I find weird. <laughs> it, it is kind of weird. You, you, it exposes it. You, you're not allowed to use the Amazon assigned name of the Amazon Poly voice. I, I thought that's what you were going to say. Right. I, <laughs> so well, just to be clear, so there's... Polly is a service from AWS, and there's a list of voices based on which language. 
So one of the popular male voices in the U.S. is Matthew. And you can use those voices in SSML on Alexa skill coming back as uh, again. And I've done that in a number of skills. But you can't say, you can't have Matthew's voice saying, hi, this is Matthew. I want to da 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 So... I Honestly, I find that totally bizarre. It is, and I don't know if they're trying to protect the brand or, or, or whatever. But, of but the Michael isn't themselves. the brand, and it's not a trademark. And I, I, yeah, I don't know. You can I just mean, shift the way around. You can have Joey say, "Hi, this is Matthew," and then you can have Matthew say, "Hi, this is Joey." Right. And I, I mean, <laughs> I think what what kind of bugs me about this actually, I and mean, it, it does bug me in some ways, is that. Um, if you could, you know, what, one of the things that might be an interesting feature is if you could say, I want to talk to Matthew. And now Matthew has a voice and a personality and so forth. And it would be interesting if every, you know, if a bunch of different skills did that. Yeah. And to have a common set of names between them. Because other, you know. It's, yeah, that is that is interesting. It's like I'm saying a... we've got a common set of fonts in between them, but we can't use the common font name. <laughs> that's what this so, feels like to me i i don't know maybe yeah. maybe i'm i'm going too far on this and i've talked to i mean we we i've we we i've rambled on about this too long anyway but yeah that's just weird. but interesting i did i did do a skill back when i did number spies i actually allowed you to change you could speak who like who was your handler and they each had names and i had to make sure that those names did match any of the poly names um but it would just change your poly voice and so then the rest of the skill, whenever they talk to you, you would be talking to your handler and that person would always speak in Matthew's voice or right. always in Joanna's voice. Right. And it well, was kind I, of fun. No, I did the same thing. In fact, that's one of the, the core features of multivocal is that you can just set a voice and mm -hmm. it it handles all of that for you. Um, yeah. I had a, a an action called, I think it was Talk to Santa's Workshop. And you would talk to the Santa's workshop and it would, in one of six or seven different voices, answer questions and so forth. And, you know, each voice had was was tied to a name. And you could ask for, for an elf by name. Right. Um, but also each elf had their own distinct answers. So if you asked, for example, oh, what's your favorite food? Some of them would talk about cookies and some would talk about hot chocolate and, you know. Each one had different sets of answers ah, and the voice to go with it. So, you know, who you were talking to. Then, yeah, no, that's clever. I, I'd like to see that in more and more skills and games, especially that yeah. you, you can kind of change the perspective based on who, uh, who you're talking to. And not only do you get a different personality and different responses, you get a different voice. You, and you know that cause you get a different, anyway, we've, we've gone off topic here. Uh, we have, but all right. Next section. Web um, search. Skills. I'm trying to think if there's anything else on, on that oh, section that... before we uh um you know I think both this one and the previous one also kind of you know have this notion of uh this one more you know you can't you're you're allowed to have prank skills you know that's okay but you can't market a skill as one thing and it actually be a prank yeah so you you can't be deceptive you can't promote distress. You can't say that, you know. So they like have a meditation skill and you're like 30 seconds into your meditation and all of a sudden you hear, ah! Right. Oh, that's a great yeah. example. I like that one. That's good. <laughs> um, and again, that goes back to people will think this is Alexa talking and they don't want to have Alexa have yeah. a bad reputation. Yeah. And you also be, have to be careful kind of um, how you represent uh, Alexa. So like in your responses, um, kind of have to be careful because you are using Alexa's voice a lot of times and right. you don't want to have like a, a like an anti-Alexa personality. You don't want it to be like Superman and Bizarro or something like that and have it be an anti-character. Anti-Alexa. Anyway. Um, yeah. So the next section, they they call this web search skills. Yeah. I, I think that's actually a, a little bit incorrect. It's more, it more talks about how you need to deal with searching in general. Yeah. Um, so you can search, but you can't, you can't basically create the Google skill. Yeah. So like you could, you could probably like use, 
I know, I'm, I'm throwing this out as an example, a potential example. Um, like you could search Wikipedia for content and you could be asking questions and have Wikipedia be your source that you're searching, mm -hmm. but you can't search the whole internet. Um, right. And, and, and when you do search Wikipedia, you have to make it clear you search Wikipedia, you know, you, you yeah. can't say, you know, the world's knowledge and all you're doing is searching Wikipedia and you never say, so you need to acknowledge where your data is coming yeah. from. Um, and that, that's one of the restrictions here. Um, also, interestingly, it can't violate the, the answers can't violate any of the other policies. And that kind of goes back to the, um, the unmoderated response. I, I'm not putting hate speech. I'm just searching the content from a hate site right. and just presenting it. I'm, I'm, it's, it's not my content. Right. But yeah. You know, again, search is allowed, but you've got these kinds of restrictions. Yeah. Um, and also, you know, the next section, financial skills. Again, financial skills are allowed, but you need to make sure you're clear where your information is coming from. If you're giving a stock price, you need to say, this is five minutes behind on the ticker, or this is the opening price as of this date. Yeah. You can't just give a number and not make that clear. Could I do a pyramid scheme through an Alexa skill? Almost certainly not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be illegal activity. I, I can't do, I can't promote yeah. illegal activity through this. Although that's interesting. They don't explicitly say that here, but yeah, that's, that's illegal activity. Um, yeah. They do say, you know, again, they, they do make it clear though, if you're writing a banking skill or a FinTech thing, You've got a pile of additional in, of regulations because that's yeah. a heavily regulated industry. And they send you off to the link to, to go deal with that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so there's, you know, this is once again, another case where this is a very special topic. Um, so here's a lot more information about that topic. And it's it's kind of a specialty in its own. If you're doing uh, financial uh, skills, you know, then then that's kind of its own category and, and there, there's regulations and all kinds of other stuff that you have to pay attention to. Right. And again, there's, you know, there's, there's regulations in every country and you need to make sure you follow them. Yes. And then the final one is, is kind of interesting that it's here, but it sort of says you need to make sure you follow our invocation name requirements. Yeah. And so there's another link there and, and you can go through that, but it's talking about, you can't have one word, uh, invocation names, unless it's very specific, like it's a brand or something like, uh, I don't know, Nike could probably get away right. with having a, a, a Nike skill that's just one word. Um, but there's also, when you invoke something, there's a whole invocation phrase and and the, that includes like, it starts with the wake word and it includes some, some kind of some filler uh, words um, and then the actual name, invocation name of the skill. And you can change the order around and there's just launching the skill and there's also kind of like deep linking into a specific intent inside the skill. So these guidelines cover all those things. There's specific words like launch and play and things that are reserved words. Um, it also talks about, uh, you know, if you've got uh, abbreviations, what you need to do with that. So there's and, just a, a right. whole bunch of guidelines on that. Bunch of guy and, and again, these are also guidelines for each language. So these are yep. some language specific guidelines about your invocation name. So definitely, you know, that, that's probably the second thing you need to make sure you look at after you've, you know, looked at the general guidelines and make sure that you can do them is come up with a name and make sure you can use it. Yes. And that's trickier than it sounds sometimes, but you know, they're, I've seen plenty of skills and actions that have gone, you know, all the way through and suddenly can't get a name that works. Yeah. 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 You definitely have to pay attention to like, is this word going to be misunderstood frequently? Is it, you know, is it a homo homonym or does is it, it, is it too close to another brand name that I'm not allowed to use the trademark of? Is it? Yeah. 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 Uh, and I've seen that. I've seen also like squatting based on like a sentence, which would be something that you would typically ask 
in a one party experience and they've been trying to, they're trying to make that be the name of the skill mm-hmm. and then they 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 do a whole bunch of those with the hopes that they'll somehow I don't know, kind of like the the poor man's uh, search engine optimization you know what tricks can we do to do SEO and in voice and and there's a whole set of guidelines um that you need to follow so, with that so yeah make sure you look at those guidelines as well um and again look at look at the the guidelines for developing your skill in the first place and make sure you're yep. solidly on the line of uh of being able to do what you want yeah and if you if you kind of feel like you're having to justify or kind of twist the guideline there's probably a good chance that it's going to fail and that's kind of on you yeah uh, to be honest um so there's there's plenty that you can do that's clearly within bounds uh, so it's safer to stick within bounds. So good set of guidelines. Some of them are pretty straightforward. Others, yeah, they may be a little bit vague, but they're they're there for a reason. Yeah. Um, and we do, you know, like I said last time, we love to hear your stories about how you've uh, worked through some of these, how you've tripped over some of them. Yeah. Um, feel free to share them in the comments. Find us on uh, LinkedIn or Twitter or on Alexa Slack, that's always it. If you haven't joined Alexa Slack, that's a great place to discuss many of these issues as well. There's a, a yeah. bunch of people who are there who um, do the same sorts of things that we do and, and have been been there, done that, and are willing to help other people through these problems. Yeah, I agree. And, um, and you know, I'm seconding what Alan says about share your stories. Certification failure stories are sometimes some of the best stories. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you can, it would be great to to hear your story and kind of what worked or what you had to do to get through. Um, sometimes it might feel like jumping through hoops, but um, in the end, there's you know reasons why they're there. So, I uh, would love to hear more about it. Uh, as you say, reaching out to us in the various uh, um, ways that you can contact us and maybe one of your comments will trigger something else that we'll talk about in a future episode of two voice devs two voice devs take care take care alan thank you